thank you uh, all for coming and uh, uh, welcome to the, uh, to the video audience as well. Uh, my name is Brian Meredith um, from Health Force uh, and uh, we uh, recently, as you probably know, completed uh, an audit of the Mass Mental, uh, Mass Mental Clinic here. Um, and um, as a result of the audit, we've prepared a, uh, a coding and billing training presentation, uh, which I'm going to go into right now, uh, basically to review the uh, findings in an uh, educational format. So I'll jump right into the, uh, the agenda today. Uh, we've divided the presentation into two parts, one for therapists and one for psychiatrists. Uh, this session is designed for psychiatrists. Uh, with focus, as you can see, on evaluation and management level. So, uh, although we are talking about uh, psychiatrists, directly to psychiatrists today, um, I also have some information here because the psychiatrists all, all often work with uh, other individuals, other providers, uh, and it does affect the, uh, the billing. Um, the uh, residents, uh, we do have residents here at Mass Mental, um, and there are slightly different uh, supervision rules for uh, residents for Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, the, resident, the services of residents uh, are certainly billable with the appropriate supervision. Uh, for Medicare, there has to be a teaching physician statement uh, added to the resident note uh, that basically attests that the teaching physician uh, did uh, evaluate the patient and it either agrees or modifies with the uh, findings of the resident. For Medicaid, the supervision requirement is slightly less stringent, if you will. Uh, for license, for uh, residents in the second year of their psychiatric residency, uh, their services may be built with a uh, statement from the supervising physician attesting that to their direct supervision, meaning that they were uh, uh, on-site and immediately available at the time the service was provided. Um, interns and medical students, they the, the amount of documentation that can support the built service is very limited, um, and they, they cannot bill for their own services. Uh, RNs also have limited contribution, um, with the exception of the group therapy service, which they are allowed to provide uh, under direct supervision uh, as well. And uh, LMHCs uh, are not recognized by CMS uh, for direct payment, uh, but they also their services may also be provided uh, by incident to or direct supervision requirement in the non-facility setting. So getting into the uh, services and the coding and billing requirements and documentation requirements themselves, uh, we start uh, this morning with the diagnostic evaluation. Uh, there are two codes, uh, 90791 is for the diagnostic evaluation uh, primarily for therapists, 90792 uh, primar primarily for psychiatrists that are, uh, that are um, uh, implementing a med medication management regime for uh, their patients. The 90792 uh, reimburses slightly higher, so it's important to make that distinction. But both of these services include the following uh, complete uh, medical, including past medical, family, and social history. Uh, a, uh, psych a psychiatric history of the patient, an appropriate mental status examination. Uh, it, it used to be that the requirement was a complete mental status exam. Uh, CMS has dropped the word complete before the mental status exam requirement now, so that the, they're leaving the, uh, the uh, content of the mental status exam up, up to the uh, provider uh, to determine what's appropriate. Uh, for example, in some settings, a, uh, a mini mental or cognitive exam may not be uh, appropriate for some for some patients. Um, so that's uh, a relatively recent change. Um, if there's if there's if there's not if there's not sufficient mental status exam, however, if it's so meager, uh, then in most cases an auditor won't uh, examine uh, won't allow the serve the service. Um, even non, what I just said, notwithstanding. So there should be uh, an appropriate mental status exam. Uh, an establishment of an initial or working diagnosis is a requirement. Evaluation of the patient's ability to, uh, and capacity to respond to treatment 
uh, for, exam for example, patients that have a high degree of cognitive impairment uh, would not be appropriate candidates for, uh, for therapy, for example. Um, and um, so the diagnostic interview should, uh, uh, that, that is a component of the diagnostic interview to evaluate the patient's ability to respond to treatment. And finally, uh, an initial plan of treatment. So both the diagnosis and the plan of treatment may evolve over time, uh, but to be billable, the diagnostic interview should, con uh, could, should contain um, at least the initial uh, elements of those, um, those features. So uh, some questions to be answered about the diagnostic inter uh, evaluation. Uh, information uh, may be obtained not only from the patient but other physicians and uh, healthcare providers if the patient is not able uh, to provide a complete uh, history. Uh, it may be reported uh, once per day and, and not on the same day as an evaluation and management service provided by the same uh, individual. Um, the service may be consider, uh, covered once at the outset of an illness uh, and may be, may, uh, be billed again uh, if a new episode of illness occurs, for example, if there's a significant change in the patient's status uh, or the patient has lapsed treatment for a, a, long, a significant period of time, it would be appropriate uh, for the uh, treating physician to do a new diagnostic interview. Um, th there used to be a urban myth that you could only uh, bill uh, a mental status exam once per patient or once per year, uh, those things aren't true. It's all dependent on the uh, clinical status of, of the patient. Likewise, if there was a change of physician, the change, let's say, that, let's say a psychiatrist left the practice and a new psychiatrist was starting, um, it would be appropriate that they completed their own diagnostic evaluation, even though the patient um, has already received a, uh, a diagnostic and uh, finally, some patients, uh, especially children, may require uh, more than one uh, visit for the completion of their diagnostic interview. And in these cases, it would be acceptable to bill more than one diagnostic interview in units of one on different days of service, as long as there was documentation in the medical record that supported the fact that uh, the, uh, additional, um, uh, the, the additional service was warranted. So in addition to the diagnostic interview, we also have the interactive uh, complexity uh, code, which is an add-on code. It's never built by itself. It's always added to uh, another uh, psychiatric uh, service or procedure. Um, and this would come into play when there are uh, difficult communication or discordant or emotional uh, family members present, uh, present or, in, or if a young person or verbally challenged or undeveloped or impaired patient was involved. Um, and this service may be used in connection with the diagnostic interview uh, or psychotherapy or psychotherapy with evaluation and management, um, in group psychotherapy, but not with evaluation management alone. So if we have medication management visits by themselves, for example, what I think uh, the clinic calls medication only visits, the interactive complexity code would not be situations. So uh, the uh, service is used to evaluate children using inanimate objects uh, or uh, uh, such as toys and dolls, etc. Um, and also adults who, again, do not have the ability to interact through an ordinary verbal communication uh, methods. Uh, and the service would normally be performed using physical aids, non-verbal communication, or in some cases an interpreter uh, for someone who is deaf or doesn't speak the language of the, of the provider. These would all be appropriate uh, settings. Also, adult patients with uh, organic mental uh, deficits or are catatonic or mute. So the uh, service may be reported with psychotherapy when these conditions are, are present. Uh, one of these, at least one of these conditions are present. And these are the conditions with that would have to be documented in the, uh, uh, the physician's note uh, in, order to, um, in 
in order to uh, support the billing of the service. So maladaptive communication, emotional or behavioral conditions inhibiting implementation of the treatment plan, um, mandated recordings uh, such as uh, use or neglect, uh, or uh, play equipment, the, uh, the involvement of play equipment device interpreter or uh, translator would have to be stated. Um, also, the uh, medical record must include the uh, adaptations utilized, the rationale, again, for using the interactive uh, techniques to, to demonstrate medical necessity, and also the treatment recommendations. So, at this point, I'm going to skip ahead uh, to the evaluation management um, section. Um, and uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is new patient clinic visits. Now, um, my recommendation for psychiatrists in the clinic setting um, is for new, all new patient visits, I would recommend using 90792, which is the diagnostic interview, as opposed to one of the five level uh, evaluation management services. Um, and there are primarily two reasons for that. One is I indicated the, uh, re the Medicare reimbursement fee uh, for the uh, interactive diagnostic interview. And you can see that it's more than all of the first three levels and slightly under the, the levels four and five. Now, the point here is that levels four and five are usually not built or are difficult for a psychiatrist to build because of their requirement of a complete review, medical review of systems. Most psychiatrists do not perform a complete medical review of systems on their initial diagnostic interview or their initial visit with the patient. And therefore, even though, even though those services reimburse more highly than the diagnostic interview, um, they're not likely to be supported by the documentation. So that leaves the, the best option to be the 90792 that does not require any review of systems, any medical review of systems, um, and is, as we've said, um, reimburses higher than the other three levels uh, where uh, the review of systems um, uh, would be a, a more limited requirement. And I also recommend that whatever approach that the individual psychiatrists take, not necessarily the practice, but for consistency and so that a red flag isn't raised in an audit, I would recommend that the provider decide whether to use 90792 consistently for their new patient visits or the evaluation management level and not switch back and forth between the two. Uh, and, and that would be, yes, but well, The practice of the clinic here is that uh, most clients have already had an initial evaluation by the intake process. So by the time that they are seeing the regular psychiatrist, they would not be able to use 9792, is that right? It, it, well, the, uh, so the intake is billed by who? Is billed by the psychiatrist who does the and then is it a, a another psychiatrist that actually is, 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 is assigned to the client? Assigned to the client, and and so they utilize the diagnostic uh, diagnostic interview data of the int the psychiatrist that did the intake. That's acceptable if the psychiatrist feels comfortable doing that. If that's the practice, uh, if that's the uh, the practice, um, that would certainly be acceptable if if everyone is comfortable. Uh, and as you will see, we are going to focus on the established patient evaluation management visits anyway, so we're not going to spend a lot of time with that. Um, so, uh, as I said, we'll get right into that. So the established patient uh, visits, um, there are, again, five levels, but the first level, 99211, should really almost never be utilized by a psychiatrist uh, because it's really not meant for physicians. It's really meant for... RNs, or it's really called a nurse visit. Um, the only time a psychiatrist would use it if the visit was very brief, um, say under five minutes, um, and then it might be appropriate to use the 99211. Um, if it was just a 
check in. Um, and, uh, but it would be a very brief visit. So for the mo in most cases, that leaves four levels of evaluation management visits. The level two, three, four, and five. So um, what we're going to do in this session is really the evaluation management leveling system that Medicare developed, as you, as you probably know, um, is very complex. It's, it's counterintuitive. Most physicians will tell us it's counterintuitive. Um, and it's really not the kind of thing that, that psychiatrists or physicians can really carry, in order to do it 100%, they have to carry around charts and tables with them during their daily practice. And, and most physicians, I've been doing this for 20 years, most physicians tell me that that's just not uh, practical, and I accept that. So over the years, I've developed an approach, a, a, an educational approach, or a teaching approach to physicians that really tries to focus on the information that they really need to uh, be say 95% accurate with their uh, code assignment. And let me tell you, 95% accurate, accurate is good enough. All right? No one expects them to be 100%. The government doesn't even expect physicians to be 100%. And my support for that statement is that even in the worst case scenarios, when the government puts a facility or a practice that they have proven to be guilty of fraud and abuse, the, the uh, corporate integrity agreement that they put in place requires 95% uh, accuracy um, in order to meet their, uh, the, their, their standard. And that's for practices that have a proven record of, uh, of uh, fraud and abuse. So 95% so is certainly an acceptable uh, benchmark. And that's what um, we're, we're going to, uh, this information is, is, is is the, is the goal, if you will, of this presentation. Uh, but even less than that, if you're wondering, less than that is not going to get anyone in, 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 in any great trouble. So um, any, without, uh, without further delay, let me get right into it. So we have a situation here, um, and, and I will tell you that established patient uh, visits are the most problematic or the, the, the highest risk between new patient versus established patient. The established patients are a much higher risk category. And that's because, if you see on the top here, um, it says that the uh, leveling criteria is two out of three. So here's a good example of what the government is afraid of, that, that they're afraid that will happen, is you have a patient that comes in with, a, with low medical decision making or a low complexity problem. And the physician, the data that the physician gathers is at the comprehensive level for both history and exam. Because the requirement is two out of three, that physician may feel that they can bill at the highest level because they've met the requirement of two out of three components being, um, being documented at the highest level. Um, however, um, this is exactly the situation that the Medicare would say is not appropriate to bill at, in most cases, not appropriate um, to bill at, at the highest level. And the reason is because is that their mantra, the CMS mantra, is that medical necessity is the overarching criterion for payment. Regardless of the amount of data that's recorded or the length of the note, the bottom line is what Medicare auditors are going to do is they're going to evaluate what is the medical necessity, what's, what what is the level of service that was required by the medical necessity of in this in this case? So I put together a uh, a set of uh, statements from CMS and other uh, highly recognized individuals that really uh, makes it possible to medical necessity is is a rather vague term um, and um, and and what auditors have to do is auditors in many cases who aren't clinicians in order to do their work they have to be able to somehow uh, objectively evaluate a physician service for medical necessity and this that I'm just going to describe to you is exactly how they do it 
Um, if I were to say, this is probably the most important slide in the whole presentation. So first of all, Medicare says that uh, the documentation of each patient encounter should include the reason for the encounter. Why is the patient being seen today? Uh, this chief complaint or reason for the encounter is what establishes the medical necessity and the reasonableness of the service. And it's sometimes referred to as the presenting problem. Medicare says that the medical necessity and reasonableness of the service bill is directly correlated to the nature of the presenting problem. So um, if we can evaluate the level of the presenting problem, then, then because there's a direct correlation, we should be able to uh, get an idea of uh, what the appropriate level code should be for that, for that service. And that's what um, uh, Dr. Levinson says in, in his book, um, uh, that's uh, been published by the AMA, Practical Evaluation Management Documentation Code Solutions for Quality Patient Care. He says that Medicare and uh, medical directors and auditors commonly apply this principle when reviewing evaluation management services by determining that, determining that increasing levels of care are proper and needed with increasing severity of illness. So for physicians who are working going about their daily uh, caseload, what they should do before assigning any code is to evaluate um, and, and to, to try to determine what the level of severity, what's the severity of the presenting problem for each one of these cases. The, the guidelines in terms of associating these levels of severity to a level of billing um, are here. So uh, typically a self-limited or minimal severity problem, something that doesn't need active treatment, would be a 99212. I refer to these as your goodbye visits. In other words, when, a, when for example, when a patient is coming in and they're, they're everything, you know, they they finished their, they've completed their, um, uh, they've completed their uh, treatment and uh, basically everything's fine, and the doc says, you know, you don't need to come back, or if you you know, just come back if, if, if you, you need to, um, that would be that. Uh, low severity, 99213, moderate severity, 99214, and high severity, 99215. So we talked about limited severity. High severity uh, is typically is defined here by CMS. These are CMS um, guidelines. And high severity would typically be a patient that was seen in the clinic that the physician would be thinking about admitting to the hospital. So one, um, psychiatric or more chronic illnesses with severe exacerbation, progression, or side effects of treatment. Um, acute or chronic illness uh, with, uh, with a, a, for example, a psychiatric illness with potential threat to, to self or others, or an abrupt change in neurological uh, status. Um, so we don't see too many of these generally in the clinic. If we do, then certainly the physician should consider billing at that level. Um, but taking the either ends of the bell curve out of the picture, all right, if you will, leaves us with the two codes all right, that are most often billed in the clinic, 99213 and 99214. All right? I would probably venture to say that this represents Possibly 75 to 80 percent of the services that are uh, the patients that are seen um, in, in the clinic. So the key, really, to uh, being an accurate coder or selecting the accurate coder is really, in many cases, comes down to uh, really delineating the difference between a level three visit and a level four visit. And I've indicated the again this is the CMS criteria for low and moderate severity. So low severity would be um, uh, two or more self-limited or minor problems, one stable uh, chronic psychiatric illness, or a, an acute uncomplicated psychiatric illness or injury. Uh, moderate severity uh, would be a, a, a chronic illness with mild exacerbation, progression, or side effects of treatment, um, or two or more stable psychiatric or possibly one psychiatric and one medical 
uh, illness or an undiagnosed new um, psychiatric pro uh, problem with uncertain pro um, prognosis or an acute complicated uh, psychiatric uh, illness. So once you have, uh, once the provider or the, the, the uh, physician has determined the level of severity, to complete the uh, support that was would needed to, uh, uh, the documentation to support the service, now you're looking, that's where you bring in the data uh, part of it. So it's, so you don't, you don't, you wouldn't do the data first and then say, you know, based on the data, I can bill at this level. You do the severity first and then make sure that your data supports that level, right? And if it doesn't, uh, then you might have to lower the level a bit if your data doesn't support it. But, but when we have a, um, uh, but when we have, when we establish the level of severity, the only other things we need to do to support it is to make sure that we have the appropriate data. And for low severity, uh, that would be uh, an expanded problem focus uh, history, which is one element of the history of present illness and one uh, review of systems, which, which can be either constitutional or uh, psychiatric, and a what's called a limited psychiatric exam or a limited mental status exam, um, uh, what plus a constitutional exam. So two systems, one constitutional, one psychiatric, which every mental status exam includes a, a constitutional system because of the uh, they talk about the general appearance of the patient. That is a constitutional system element. So uh, most mental status exams, by definition, meet the criteria for expanded problem focus coming right out of the gate, right? So uh, because a limited psychiatric exam is any number of psychiatric elements. So if you have the general step appearance of the patient and any number of psychiatric elements, then you've met the requirement expanded problem focused exam. Uh, the requirements for moderate severity, however, <coughs> jump up a level. So, so for moderate severity, you would need a detailed history, which includes four elements of the HPI. And by the way, these cards that I'm providing to all attendees, um, on the back of it, have the individual elements of the HPI, they have the individual elements of the uh, review of systems and also the past family social history as a reference. Um, they are pocket sized, they can fit right in your coat pocket. Um, they're really handy references um, uh, that you can use for this purpose. Now, these are comprehensive level, right? So they would only come into play for the level five visit, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, but you can certainly can use them as references to, to uh, indicate the options and the data elements that you have to choose from for. Um, either the low or the moderate severity um, level service. So, so four elements of the HPI, uh, two to nine uh, uh, review of systems, and, and the two can be, again, constitutional and psychiatric, so that shouldn't be uh, too difficult. At least one um, past family social history element, and now a detailed exam. So a detailed exam, um, and, and Medicare doesn't... Uh, for the 1995 guidelines, they don't specifically define what a detailed exam is, um, so there's a little bit of gray area there. Um, Health Force has defined internally, we've adopted an internal audit standard of two systems, constitu again, constitutional and psychiatric, and the psychiatric component includes at least four um, elements, uh, four bulleted elements uh, uh, from the 1997 psychiatric exam. I know the, the font is a little small here, but um, uh, so any four bulleted items from this 1997 uh, psychiatric exam plus uh, the constitutional uh, or the musculoskeletal would be uh, sufficient for, uh, for the detailed level. So the documentation requirements aren't very extensive for either the low severity or the moderate severity uh, patient. And that's if you're using the level of the severity of the illness plus the history and exam, which are the two elements to support the service. 
if you're going, if you're not going to use the history, uh, both the history and exam to support the service, it does get a little more complicated. So if you like to keep things simple, uh, in fact, uh, I worked with uh, Ken Mitchell a few years ago to develop a training program for uh, Moonlighters. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a video training program, um, and it really focused on that to keep it simple. The severity of the presenting problem and the, the uh, history and exam. But the system does allow you to level these services um, differently, and that's by incorporating something that's called medical decision making into the, into the process. Again, if you want to keep things simple, and usually, uh, you know, most physicians that I've dealt with do, um, then you, you can kind of sidestep the medical decision making piece. But I am going to go through it with you uh, just to be, um, to be thorough. So, if you are starting with either the history or the mental, so again, looking at the severity of the presenting problem as our starting point, and then adding to it either history or exam, not both, because if, if you added both, you'd be done. But if you add one or the other and you have to bring in medical decision making, then a low, um, a 99213 would be supported by a low severity presenting problem and either two what we call problem points or two data points. So the, in the, the CMS scoring system, um, two problem points points could be achieved by uh, if the patient presented with two stable problems um, or one worsening problem. And on the data side, it would include a review or order of a, of a lab and an image, or the physician were to document an independent visualization of an image, or discussion of the case um, uh, uh, with uh, another uh, healthcare provider. I actually have to um, I'm going to update this. It does not have to be in the presence of the patient. That's that's a, a, a typo there. Um, so discussion of the case with another healthcare provider uh, would be sufficient. Um, for again, as again in, in the case of uh, level four, the criteria goes up a notch, and so now we're looking for three problem points or three data points. Uh, in this case, three stable problems assessed for management, or one worsening and one stable. Um, or for three data points, review or order of lab or image and discussion of, of the case with another healthcare provider, um, or review or order of lab and um, independent visualization of the image. If we do, you are in a situation, we said that, that it would certainly be a minority situation where a high severity, um, uh, high severity problem would, would uh, occur. Um, then the requirements, again, uh, are uh, another level. Um, they're documented on this card, which would be four HPI, uh, a complete or ten review of systems, uh, past family and social history, and a uh, comprehensive exam, which would include, um, on this it would include all of the constitutional, all of the psychiatric, and uh, I know it says one there, but that should be all, both elements. Uh, one element of the musculoskeletal and all of the psychiatric. Uh, and Bob, I will for you, forward you the, uh, uh, the uh, updated or the, the uh, errata uh, for, for, for reference going forward. I apologize for that. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go into the, uh, the detail here of the, um, the medical, the high complexity medical decision making, uh, but you will have it uh, in the uh, presentation for reference. Um, I want to keep to our time, um, and again, this is something that not only is, is it probably a low volume service, but it's also not the easiest way even to get to the, um, to the, uh, uh, to the, to support the level. Um, I am going to go right into a time-based EM leveling. Uh, because time-based enum e e leveling is an option, um, and if more than if the content of the service, more than fifty percent of the service is spent counseling or coordinating care, right? This is the situation where the counseling and the coordination care has to be done in the presence of the patient, not in the other situation. In this situation, um, and there are three components 
that you would need to document, and that would be the total time, the counseling and coordination care time, and a summary of the content of the counseling and or coordination care. And the documentation should include a statement along the lines of this to, to support it. I spent a total of X minutes with the patient and family, um, X minutes, which should be greater than 50% of which were spent counseling on and coordinating care with Dr. So-and-so. Uh, these are the, uh, the time, if you're using time to level the service, right? Uh, the, 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 on the right-hand side is the actual time uh, parameters, 6 to 12 for level 2, 13 to 20 for level 3, 21 to 32 for level 4, and 33 plus for level 5. That's the total time, greater than 50% of which would have to be spent counseling or coordination care for the service to qualify to use time, and then you would apply the total time to assign um, the level. Just some definitions for reference um, for uh, what EM counseling consists of and what coordination and care uh, consists of. Um, regardless of whatever level is chosen, um, they should be a medical necessity should be there to support uh, the level. So an auditor would have to see that again. We assess what's the severity of the, uh, the, the this particular uh, case, um, and it should be aligned with the level. So um, in situations for uh, psychiatrists where psych, uh, psychotherapy is added to the evaluation management visit, um, um, it certainly is billable, uh, but the psychiatrist would have to be very careful how to document these, uh, these two services. It would be billed as uh, evaluation management plus the uh, psychotherapy uh, code. Um, and the documentation needs to support that. So first, the evaluation management level has to stand on its own. It has to be fully supported by the medical record. And then the psychotherapy session also has to stand on its own. So, um, so, the, so especially the two primary components for the psych billing psychotherapy is that the length of the psychotherapy session, not the entire session, but the length of the session that was specifically and exclusively spent in psychotherapy should be recorded, um, and also the specific clinical therapeutic psychotherapeutic interventions should, that were utilized in the psychotherapy session should also be, or the psychotherapeutic uh, component um, um, of the session should be should be documented. And if you're using time to level the evaluation management service as opposed to the content, then psychotherapy cannot be built in addition to an e &M service that is leveled using time. Um, and the final slide is on evaluation management plus injections. If the medication is injected on the same day, um, then the, in order to build the e &M, the, the visit, it would have to be separately identifiable. Um, so if the, if the content of the evaluation management visit was related to the injection, then it's not separately billable. It would only be separately billable if there was a different problem that was being evaluated um, or there was a significant change uh, in the patient's uh, status uh, between um, this visit and the last visit, they, uh, the last uh, time they were seen. Um, okay. So I am going to uh, stop here, and uh, uh, if there are any questions, uh, we have a small group this morning, so uh, I don't know if there will be any questions, but I'm going to offer it anyway. Uh, any other questions other than Bob, you had one earlier, but, um, so, okay, so, um, so that's uh, basically the uh, content for evaluation management. I thank you uh, for your uh, attention. I know this, uh, this is, uh, that information is rather can be rather technical and, and dry, so I do appreciate your uh, uh, your attendance and, and your uh, attention. Um, and I'm available, of course, for for any follow up uh, questions. Um, and, uh, and I guess uh, Bob, you would be the contact for that initially. Um, if there are any follow up questions, I also want to mention that uh, uh, Bob has spent a lot of time, as you probably know, uh, developing uh, templates that will 
enable you to better to assist you in, in order to capture all of these uh, requirements, and I think you'll find them to be uh, great assets to you in, in your work. So thank you again, and, uh, uh, and uh, appreciate your Thank you. That was that's really good, I think.